Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com. Today we make custom Scrabble wall art. For this specific project, we're making a wall art of a bunch of different names. And the material we used was three quarter inch furniture grade plywood. Now you can tell it's furniture grade because if you notice on the surface, it's nice and clean. Well, if it was any other sort of uh, quality of plywood, you'd end up with like little discs and things like that. So it's a really nice finish, very relatively thick veneer on it, as you can see here. But the dead giveaway that it's plywood is here. So I have a lot of different tools in the shop that I could have made this with. I found the most efficient way was actually just to use my table saw. So table saw, I would cut these out as squares. And again, table saw is great for cutting out squares. So these are roughly six and a quarter inches square. Then after the squares were done, um, the next step was sanding them, cleaning them up um, after the laser engraving. So I use the laser behind me here to do one at a time. Now it's just more efficient to do one at a time in this case here. And the reason for that is you got to think about the laser is traveling all the way across. If I do, let's say two of these, like this here, there we go. If I do two of them, the laser is wasting time between here and here doing nothing. Here and here doing nothing. So as a result, for something like this here, that would be relatively fast to laser engrave, it becomes relatively slow to engrave because I'm going over so much area doing nothing. Uh, the laser is off, uh, the, the laser beam is off, the laser is still on obviously, but there's nothing happening, so basically it's laser time that's wasted. Now the first tool I thought about when I was going to do this project was actually to use my CNC router. And the reason why I chose against it, uh, the main reason is because I don't want to waste a lot of material. You have to remember with a table saw, you have, you're maybe removing not even one eighth of material just from the saw itself. While with a router, you're probably using at least a quarter inch bit, if not, bit, if not a larger diameter. So that extra material just becomes sawdust. And in this case here, just going through the table saw was more efficient, no program needed. And best of all, very little dust was actually created uh, during the cutting process. Now for this Scrabble wall art, I could have literally made it out of any material. If you wanted these out as titanium that was fiber etched, we can do that. Stainless steel is fine. Uh, any sort of spec that you have material wise, we can also do them out of rubber. If you wanted me to make these into rubber stamps and you stamp your wall, totally fine. We can do that for you as well. You can also make stencils. So let's say you wanted this Y, you, you know, you had a, a huge art work to do. Uh, and it was, let's say, Scrabble tiles like this here and you wanted them to be stencils, we can make that for you too. That would actually be a pretty cost-effective way of doing a huge mural. Uh, something you got to keep in mind though, if you're doing stencils for something like this here, you have to support little inner parts, so the inside of the four would need a little bridge, but otherwise your material options are totally endless with us. When it comes to laser engraving, literally anything can be engraved onto anything, unless we're going through it. In this case here again, we're doing one at a time, uh, so that means basically you can have any, any sort of mix and match of uh, letters that you want. So, you know, it's the same sort of blank that, that I created with the, with the table router. It's just I'm engraving a different letter on it, and a different number, obviously, for the point system for the Scrabble wallet. Now, when it comes to your design options, they're completely endless. In this case here, again, it's six and a quarter inches square. But if you wanted this to be 10 inches square, you wanted this to be, you know, 50 inches square, whatever you you know, we could fit on the machine and do efficiently, we can do that for you as well. Of course, since we're doing essentially one at a time, uh, we can also have different sizes tiles. So what I mean is we can have the A's this size, we can have the B's a little bit bigger, C's a little bit smaller, what have you. We can also customize the font. So if you wanted a different font, if you wanted this cut all the way through, uh, any option you can think of we can do for you uh, here in the shop. Now something to do, to do to keep in mind with the design aspect is that again if you have inside parts, let's say we decided to use the laser uh, to engrave all the way through this, the inside part here would have to be supported. So you need like a little bridge either going like that, like that or what have you. So there are not really any uh, 
design things that we can't do when it comes to engraving, but if it's something that we're cutting through or doing something more dynamic, uh, there are definitely some limitations just due to the laws of physics. So this is also where we can customize the design. So let's say you wanted uh, the font to be larger, wanted to be smaller, you want other sort of branding to be on there, um, any other sort of finishing ideas that you come up with, we can do that for you just as easily as what you see happening here with the letters. Now the nice thing about the laser is everything's in permanent. So there's nothing that will peel, fade or crack over time or come off. So this engraving is part of that plywood forever until it goes into the fire pit. Now for this specific project, we did roughly around 30 tiles. Uh, but if you wanted to have, you know, 100 tiles, 1,000 tiles, whatever number of tiles you want, even if you just have like one name, let's say like Simon, uh, then you only need five. Uh, we can do that for you just as easily as larger volumes. So there's no real limit regarding how many that you want. There's also no limit as to how many uh, letters you want. So let's say you want, you know, 100 T's and one A, not a problem, we'll do that for you just as easily as the other way around or completely random letters. If you also wanted numbers or whatever, we can do that for you as well. Now what you see happening here is sanding and that's something I've done a lot of. Now, if I would have done this with the CNC router, I probably wouldn't have needed to sand the edges at all because the finish is really, really nice with a nice sharp bit. But when using a table saw, you have scorch marks, you have burn marks, you have you know issues on basically all the edges. And that's what the sanding is removing here. And then on the top of it, uh, just during production, some of this stuff gets a little bit dirty, so what have you. Especially when you do the laser engraving, you end up with the, the, uh, the smoke uh, on the surface of it. So what I'm doing here is I sand all the edges so all the score marks are gone from, from the table router. And then I'm sanding the top of it to remove all the smoke. But of course, if you wanted smoke on your, you know, scrambled wall tile art, not a problem, I'll just leave it there, just don't sand it. So the nice thing about sanding the surface of it is that it gives it a really nice, clean, and uh, very smooth surface. This is again, furniture grade plywood. So when you sand it, I think I used 240 grit on this. Um, it was almost, it was incredibly smooth. And when you're doing the finishing, it's really nice to finish something smooth. If you want to get an idea of what finish can actually do to wood, this is a great example. So here again is the furniture grade plywood. It's a really nice material. And it's really strong because it's three quarter inch. And here's the finish after the finish. So as you can tell, it's quite a big difference. Let me just put, so the grain sort of goes in the same direction. You can see a little bit of a seam here when they did the, uh, when they made the plywood, they don't have, you know, massive trees. So there's always definitely some little seams of the veneer, but they're very, very minor. And unless I pointed it out to you, you never would have really noticed. So we can finish this however you want. And if you chose to go with plywood, obviously, uh, we can make these out of hardwood as well. So then you'd have other options. Uh, for this thing here, uh, if you wanted just a clear coat, it would be like this, but a little bit shiny, or we can give it a dull finish. Uh, we can also, of course, make it like a little bit of a cherry finish, which I think looks a lot nicer. It just accentuates the laser engraving and makes it more look more like wood. Most people think of wood, they think of brown. They don't really think of, you know, this color here is like a whitish uh, color. But if you want it to be, let's say, black, you want it to be green, you want it to be, you know, any color you want, we can finish it for you here in the shop. And so that when you get it at your house, it's already finished and it's ready to put up on the wall. Now what I've come, you know, if, I'm entirely self-taught in everything that I do here. So over time I've realized that there's no point absolutely drenching uh, the, the wood with a finish, uh, in this case here a stain, because all you do is create a lot of problems where it doesn't dry properly or it seals wrong or what have you. So here what I'm doing is I'm applying tons of stain on the first one and then generally you have too much stain so then I apply the extra on the other one and I sort of spread out the load uh, for the staining. Now of course when it comes to staining, I don't care about the backside because that's going against the wall, but if you wanted us to stain the backside, that's not a problem. It's just one extra little step because basically you can't really stain all the surfaces at the same time because when you put it down on something, that's when uh, that surface won't dry. There's ways around that of course, uh, but generally I like to do you know, five sides and then if the last side is needed, I do that one at the end. So just to give you an idea of the size difference, these are the default ones we have on our website at sandboxranch.com. 
and they're decent size for coasters and that kind of stuff. And the ones I made for my living room are this one. So you can see here, quite a bit larger. And that's something you actually want to keep in mind. Um, yeah, you can stick this on the wall. If you have a lot of family, this is probably the only way to go ahead and do it because you fill up a large area pretty fast. Uh, but you know, my family doesn't have very long names and something like this was better because I wanted to be able to see the Scrabble stuff at a distance. So how do you go about getting these? I have my website sandboxranch.com. You can order them online, but of course, if you want something totally custom, contact me either on that website or on cncra.com, and we'll make it for you and ship it right to your door.